Like many other Christian denominations, the Seventh-day Adventist Church believes in a core set of beliefs about God and salvation. During a time of religious revival in the Northeastern United States, many religious movements began, including early Seventh-day Adventists. The few hundred Seventh-day Adventists grew to about 3,000 by 1863, which is considered the official establishment of the church. Today, the church has grown to millions of members around the world, including a huge following in Nigeria. Joining us today on the show to discuss the social impact of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Nigeria, what makes Adventist health and educational institutions different, is Ted N.C. Wilson, pastor of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and currently serves as the president of the General Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist. He's also in Nigeria to celebrate 100 years of Adventism in the Southeast. Good morning, Pastor Wilson. Good, good to have you join us on the morning show today. Thank you. It's a great privilege to be with you. Thank you for this opportunity. You're welcome indeed. Uh, please <coughs> tell us in detail uh, the a core essence of your visit to Nigeria. Uh, as a matter of fact, I should start by congratulating you uh, for the centenary anniversary of the Seventh-day uh, Adventist. Uh, but then, uh, what is the kernel of your visit and what are the programs that you will be partaking in and their significance uh, to the church? Well, thank you for that question. It's uh, very important to explain to uh, the viewers why I am in Nigeria. Let me just say to begin with, it's a great privilege to be on Arise News. In fact, your name, Arise, actually comes from the Bible, from Isaiah <laughs> chapter 60, where it says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. And what a privilege it is to be able to tell you that our church, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, has been in existence, as was explained to begin with, for quite some time, but it is celebrating 100 years in eastern Nigeria. So we're here in Abba. Uh, we're going to have a very special uh, occasion today, a big rally to celebrate the centenary. I've also been here because we have the year-end meetings of our West Central Africa Division. We have 13 world divisions around the globe. And uh, I'm here to help uh, participate. We finished that down in, down in uh, uh, Ikot Ekpende. And we had the very fine meetings there. My third reason for being in Nigeria is simply a pastoral visit, to encourage our church members to help them to be the best citizens of Nigeria helping people physically, mentally, socially, and spiritually. We want to be part of the solution in Nigeria. Thank you. All right, then. Uh, so let's talk about, first off, uh, I even appreciate the fact that you've uh, been able to coin or show us exactly where uh, Arise uh, is coined from the Bible. So I appreciate that. But let's talk about your, uh, your interaction uh, with certain governors uh, in Nigeria, even in Akwaibom State, and even Abia's Alex Oti, where you spoke passionately of the need for leaders to consider the freedom of conscience, <coughs> justice, and mercy for all the, uh, and, all, and the humility of leadership. Now, can you expand on this injunction a little bit further? Well, that's a great question, and it really was a privilege to meet with uh, two governors so far and uh, to be able to share with them and encourage them spiritually. You know, leaders, uh, the Bible tells us we need to pray for leaders because they need wisdom. Each of us needs to receive the wisdom from heaven in order to guide and to be able to lead in a particular way. We did emphasize in both situations the great need for uh, the emphasis on essentially religious liberty. When there is religious liberty for all, then there is a wonderful foundation upon which uh, society can be built and government activities. Uh, so we asked in a very special way that for Seventh-day Adventists who worship on the seventh day, the seventh day Sabbath, uh, Saturday, 
that uh, we would have special accommodations for special work provisions, that uh, community work activities that are planned, uh, for elections that may take place, for educational institution exams and that kind of thing, that alternative dates uh, can be accommodated for Sabbath observers, whether they be Seventh-day Adventists or others. In this way, all can participate in society, in education, in community services without the feeling that somehow uh, their religious convictions are being compromised. And I'm grateful that uh, the governors listened, and I believe, by God's grace, they will be able to provide accommodating arrangements for Seventh-day Adventists and others who have certain religious convictions, because we want to be part of society and be a blessing as well. All right, Pastor Wilson, uh, in being part of the society, uh, talk to us about the a social impact of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, uh, particularly in the education and the health sector. Uh, of course, I know that uh, there are two important universities uh, that are owned uh, by uh, a Seventh-day Adventist. Uh, <coughs> yeah, uh, Babcock uh, is one uh, in, in Elishon Remo uh, in Ogo State, and of course, there is the Clifford uh, University. Uh, talk to us about uh, the social impact of uh, what you do here in Nigeria outside of the church and what makes Adventist health and educational institutions different from others? That's a great question. Uh, actually, you've mentioned Babcock University will be there uh, just uh, tomorrow. And we just were at Clifford University, uh, two of our fine institutions. There are many secondary schools as well, elementary schools, primary schools. These are essentially uh, wonderful opportunities for uh, Seventh-day Adventists to share with others not only how to obtain a good vocation, uh, to become a professional, to be a, a blessing to society, but also to understand spiritual values that will take you through not only this life, but into eternity. You know, in, in Matthew, the chapter, uh, chapter 9, it says in verse 35 that Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. So this special emphasis that Christ has given to us of teaching, healing, preaching. Uh, all of these are part of Seventh-day Adventist understanding to be able to treat the whole person. That's why we have these educational institutions. That's why we have health institutions. Here in Abba, we just visited uh, the other day uh, our hospital and a motherless baby's home. My heart was touched as I saw these precious little babies who have no mothers and the nurses are taking care of these little ones. You know, this is an important part of helping in society. So the difference, as you've indicated, is that we have a purpose and we have a model. And that is that Christ showed his love and his care and asks us to follow in his footsteps in helping people in a very dynamic way. And that's really what drives us. It's not just altruism or just we want to have good public relations. It's because God's love works through his people to touch the lives of others. And that's why Seventh-day Adventist education, uh, health outreach, community outreach, uh, uh, development and relief agencies, and all of these things that Seventh-day Adventists run helping young people, mothers, uh, women, men, young people. Uh, these all have a purpose because we want to elevate people and bring them into the presence of God. Well, thank you so much uh, for that, Pastor. 
But let's talk about your, the central message uh, that the General Conference of the Seventh-day Adventists uh, bringing the world at this time of social and economic challenges, especially here uh, in Nigeria. Is there a spiritual safe haven? Also, you've spent uh, a lot of time in the Southeast and the South-South uh, since you've been here. What is your impression of uh, those parts of the country uh, as you've toured during this visit? Well, let me begin by saying we have been cared for in such a hospitable way. I don't feel unsafe. Uh, we have been uh, cared for and given such uh, amazing assistance, and we're just grateful. My wife is with me also, and it's a great privilege to visit Nigeria. Uh, we had hoped to visit a few more places, but because of some technical aspects, uh, we haven't been able to do that, but we will be, as I mentioned, in Babcock University on Sunday. It'll be a great privilege to be in the Lagos area and be able to touch uh, people's lives. You know, you have hit on a very important point, and today life seems to be falling apart so many places. Uh, the economic situation, of course, here in Nigeria, I recognize that's a challenge for people. Uh, political problems around the world. We, we pray for peace in the Middle East. We pray for peace uh, in Ukraine and in Russia uh, and many other aspects around the world. We have Seventh-day Adventists in about 210 countries around the, the globe. And so, of course, our hearts are very touched when there is difficulty and challenge. But I suppose the biggest message that Seventh-day Adventists could bring and not only to uh, Southeast Nigeria, not, in, not only to the entire country of this mighty nation of Nigeria, but throughout the world. And that is that there is hope. There is hope to bring understanding and encouragement. In fact, in the Bible, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it says that we need to be part of the ministry of reconciliation, helping to bring people together. And I hope that Seventh-day Adventists, as part of society in Nigeria, will be very much a, a part of bringing reconciliation, bringing understanding between different people groups, uh, different language groups, uh, people who have differing views, but really can be united. And of course, as Christians, we believe we can be united in Christ and in the beautiful values that he brings. So I am hoping by God's grace that Seventh-day Adventists will be, as I mentioned, the best citizens helping to be reconcilers and bringing people together in God's love. All right. Um, I know that you have touched a bit on need before, but I'd like to ask you uh, so that you can speak to it in, uh, 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 in detail. Uh, when elections or census counts and many important national events hold on Saturdays uh, when you are likely to be in communion with God, um, how is this arrangement harmonized to accommodate your participation? And are Adventists and millions of Sabbath keepers uh, dis disenfranchised? Uh, what would be your advice? Um, and a, color a corollary to this question would be, uh, what's your general take uh, in terms of uh, politics and, and the church. Uh, Nigeria had uh, an important general election earlier in the year, and practically everybody, including the church, uh, was involved uh, one way or the other. Uh, so much so that uh, a lot of people felt that the church shouldn't have been involved uh, in partisan politics. What would be your advice going forward to members of your church and generally to uh, uh, those who subscribe to Christianity? Well, you have touched on a very important point, and uh, I want to make it very clear that the World uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church does not become involved in political activity. Uh, to be partis <clears throat> partisan and to be uh, part of some kind of political promotion on the part of the church is not what the church does. Uh, what we need to do is to pray for leaders. We need to encourage them. Of course, individuals can have their own 
uh, personal convictions and connections. But as a church, we should always stay above politics. And every person on every side of any question can then recognize that Seventh-day Adventists are truly trying to help society and not just push one particular political agenda. Uh, I think it comes back, of course, to religious liberty. And I am very grateful. Let me express deep appreciation to the uh, Federal Republic of Nigeria for its uh, firm stand on providing religious liberty for all people. And I know that uh, the leaders of this country will uh, prosper and be blessed by continuing to provide freedom of conscience and religious liberty. Uh, when Seventh-day Adventists, uh, because of their convictions about keeping the seventh day Sabbath holy, uh, do not participate in elections, uh, this of course does disenfranchise that particular uh, group of the population. But even so, uh, even if you don't get to vote, you need to pray for your leaders and work with them. As I said before, Seventh-day Adventists need to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. So regardless of how things develop, we are to try to bring encouragement to society in general and to be the best citizens possible. And I hope that Seventh-day Adventists will do that. All right, then. But you, you've also uh, spoken about the fact that you're here, of course, uh, celebrating 100 years uh, of the Seventh-day Adventists in the southeast of Nigeria. Could you share some significant milestones, as you remember, and achievements that uh, have taken place during this period, both in terms of uh, community development and uh, maybe even religious outreach? Well, first of all, what a privilege to see so many Seventh-day Adventist churches uh, in this region. Uh, as we were driving from uh, Ikot Ekpene up to Abba, it was a fascinating thing to see so many Seventh-day Adventist churches along the road. And this tells me that uh, the gospel has reached in so many ways to uh, every village, every town, to people's hearts. But you know, uh, there's much more to a church and to service to God than just putting up a church and meeting on a particular day. Uh, we are to live our Christianity every day. In fact, the greatest sermon that can ever be preached is not something from a pulpit, but it is the life of a loving and lovable Christian, someone who offers themselves in service to others. So that's why it's important for our church members to be part of community services, part of health outreach, uh, part of taking care of the elderly, uh, those who are perhaps somehow uh, disabled in some way, individuals who need an extra lift, people who need encouragement. And actually, uh, the development of the church in Nigeria itself, and of course, in the eastern part of Nigeria, we're particularly celebrating the centenary here, but the church has developed in many other parts of Nigeria and the world. Uh, the developments come, of course, with educational institutions, with healthcare institutions, clinics, with outreach to people in the community, and really, these are the practical aspects of a Christian's life and in connection with God. I suppose the most important thing that I would encourage our members and all people of Nigeria is stay personally close to God. You cannot simply uh, obtain salvation and entrance to heaven by, uh, by just saying, well, I'm a member of this church or that church. You must have a personal relationship with God. And he then can work through each of us to make our local communities better, as well as the entire nation. Uh, so I think the, the wonderful things that have developed over 100 years in the eastern part is that uh, church members are able to affect society in a positive way, by God's grace. And I hope that that will continue to be the case. All right. 
Um, you will be at the Abba Town Township Stadium today. Uh, I'm interested in what your central message uh, will be. Uh, you did mention uh, that the church uh, should be a giver of hope. Uh, and I like to say that hope is about the main thing that many Nigerians are holding on to uh, at this time. Uh, what will be your central message? Will you be praying for Nigeria or will you be asking people to be hopeful? I will absolutely do all of that. And thank you for even encouraging me to do that because prayer is a, a powerful and wonderful opportunity to try to touch the lives of people. I will actually be focusing on the mission of the church, and that is to reach out to help people in every possible way. Uh, this is a mission for every member. Every member is chosen for mission. Every member is to be part of what we call total member involvement. Everybody doing something for Jesus. Uh, every member is to say, yes, Lord, I will go. I will be part of this wonderful opportunity to touch the lives of people in a very, very particular way. One of the texts that I will be using, and it is to help people not be distracted from anything around them. The economic condition, political problems, social difficulties, uh, challenges at home, challenges at work, whatever it is, don't be distracted from your true mission, and that is to represent Jesus Christ in a powerful way. Allow him to help you to truly be a servant for others and the community. And one of the texts that I'm going to be focusing on is in Philippians chapter 3 and verses 13 and 14. And the Apostle Paul was saying, uh, says, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So I'm going to encourage people not to be distracted by any of those things around them which are going to pre, uh, perhaps provide a detour from where God wants them to go. God has a mission for each person, and he wants individuals to be able to touch the lives of others without thinking of themselves. You see, one of the biggest challenges that we face as Seventh-day Adventists and probably the whole world is pride and self. If self were put aside, in five minutes, most difficulties could be resolved. And I'm hoping that our church members, as they move into the second century of their activities, will keep in mind that Service to God and to their fellow human beings is the most important thing that they can do, and they should not be distracted from it. And I will be praying for the country of Nigeria, for the president, for the governors, for the leaders, for the, the Senate and the, the, the House, and all of those who are involved in governing this great nation of Nigeria. It is part of a global situation and we need to pray for uh, so many difficulties around the world. But believe me, I will be praying for Nigeria. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Pastor Wilson. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us uh, on the morning show today. And uh, again, congratulations on the centenary a celebration of the church in the southeastern part of Nigeria. And we hope that we have kept uh, the Sabbath holy with your good self this morning. Thank you indeed for joining us.